what does being an entrepreneur mean to me? It means freedom. It means the freedom to choose when you work, when you take breaks. It means the freedom to have a break doing 30 minutes of yoga in the middle of the day if you want, outside in the beautiful, sunny, summery weather. It means being empowered to intentionally create the business and lifestyle that you want to have. We have all of these tools at our disposal on different marketing initiatives and and ways to do it, whether it's webinars or ebooks or podcasting. There's all these different tools and you can sort of pick and choose which ones resonate with you the most. What did I want to be when I grow up? I had three things in mind. So I was very multi-passionate starting from a young age. I wanted to be an author, a teacher, and an artist. And I think my path is leading me towards these things because I have artists with my design background and I am a writer. I'm currently writing my first book which I'm going to self-publish on Amazon by next year. And teaching that could be through workshops and e-courses and retreats and things like that which is kind of my down the line five-year vision. And I also thought it would be my dream job to work online when I turned 13. I was obsessed with the internet and building web pages and learning about HTML back in the day. And I just thought if my job could be working online, I would just love that. And I kind of consider myself a visionary because I feel like at that point, point in time in the early 90s or I mean late 90s sorry I'm not that old um, I don't think that working online was even really a thing that you could do but now it is and I'm really happy to be a part of it I decided to be self-employed when I was in my quarter life crisis basically I was in a rut and I didn't like my nine-to-five job I was working at a print shop and it was just kind of this low level graphic design, not even graphic design, but production or it just didn't feel like I was utilizing my design skills as I knew that it could be taken. And, and I just had this inkling of wanting to work for myself, but being really afraid to do it. And I was living in a really small town of 10,000 people, so it didn't really feel like very conducive to working for myself because it wasn't a very big network like oh I don't live in a city so how is this going to work um, but I decided to just take the plunge by the time I was like 26 and um, first took a career break a one year career sabbatical to Southeast Asia and then sort of had this like intentional poverty situation for a couple years while I grew my business and now I'm working towards intentional abundance. Who inspires me? I think it's hard for me to answer that question because I don't like to necessarily have heroes. I think that I would li like to be my own hero and just, you know, have that as, as setting the bar. I don't try try not to compare myself to others because I feel like that doesn't really you know help help you grow and, and become better it just makes you jealous and like stuck in where you're at so I think my heroes would just be like the Buddha and Jesus and all of those spiritual masters back in the day and I just take those learnings into my everyday life and try to apply it. Um, I resonate with the Dharma more than I do with Christianity, so um, obviously more Buddha than Jesus, but I do think they go hand in hand and that they're awesome people to look up to. Uh, what's non-negotiable in my schedule is actually taking naps or getting enough sleep. Like I have this, I don't know if it's a horrible habit or what because I'm, I'm like actually a proud night owl but for a lot of people it's like bad to stay up late and you should wake up early more often and, 
and like start your schedule at 6 a.m. and do all your exercise and do this and do that by the time you're ready for work at 9 a.m. and on the go and ready and energized. But I'm not like that. I like to stay up late and sleep in late. And I get my full seven to eight hours of sleep. Even though I sleep late, I still get enough sleep. And if I don't get enough sleep, I love taking naps or siestas. What makes you feel arg? Well, pirates. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think what makes me feel arg is just um, getting in my head too much and not pushing myself forward. The arg moments are when I just don't really push myself and, and get in these like fear-based loops in my head like I'm not good enough and all that stuff. But what do I do that makes me feel more, ah, I don't know what that means exactly, but um, let's just go with the aha, like as in epiphanies and like being in the flow and being on, turned on. I like to feel turned on and the way that I get into that is by being more in my body and by being more in my body I mean movement and dance because I believe movement in body is movement in life so by physically moving whether it's just taking a walk or you know a five minute dance break in the afternoon when you're doing work on the computer or a one hour dance class I just love dancing and that's what I'm really turned on with right now I'm actually part of a Bollywood dance troupe which is pretty crazy and new to me. It's, I've been dancing with the troupe for about two months now, so it's pretty new. And this is what I love to do and what makes me feel really happy right now. And, and I think we need that balance of having that fun and to be able to inspire your creativity and get yourself back in the flow. It's, it's really this balance of work and life and movement and flow and working in such a creative field that I do um, being in the flow tapping into that flow does require being in my body and, and having that movement piece throughout the day what's on my epitaph when I die well actually I don't want to be buried I want to be cremated but if there were to be one slogan to sum me up it would actually be from my old blog the purple panda which was March to your own beat but I would change March to dance. Dance to your own beat sounds really good to me. And just finding the rhythm of your life.